So those are really the seven different sections that we have um, in the state. And then of course phase two, uh, once we get well beyond that, we're looking at to extend uh, both this to San Diego and to Sacramento. Now, now I should say that, that you know that uh, as, as we think about high-speed rail in the United States, there are a number of quarters that are extremely uh, lucrative for our business. Uh, high-speed rail does not work in every uh, geographical sector, but we're fortunate in California to have two of the main sectors, that uh, San Francisco to uh, LA Anaheim sector, prime uh, territory for high-speed rail, but also the San San Diego to uh, Los Angeles is also a very, very extremely good sector for high-speed rail. Uh, so when we hit phase two, uh, there's that potential of expanding the system even more. Uh, and then, of course, the Altamont Corridor is another potential that we're, we're, we're studying right now. And that's probably a little bit further down the line in terms of our construction. So where are we? Well, as we stated already, is that uh, we are in the Central Valley section uh, doing our environmental work. Uh, we are doing our, our analysis, and we expect to have our draft EIRs out sometime uh, in, this, in the su summer of this year, uh, mid-2012. Uh, we will then take that, uh, those drafts, which we've then produced uh, for public display, uh, public comment, uh, and then come through with uh, some recommendations to our board, uh, to the legislature, uh, to our federal partners, uh, and then ultimately uh, secure their nods and rods, which then will allow us to proceed with construction. Uh, now, while we are focusing right now on those two central sections, I will also tell you that we are continuing to study all different phases. Uh, having been involved in many large projects, one never knows uh, how project will evolve. This project, I'm sure, will evolve in many, many different aspects. Uh, and so we want to make sure that our environmental process is, in fact, ready uh, for additional construction should that uh, eventuality happen. Uh, again, we're looking for public input into all those sections. And if you are one of our partners in this construction, then we will expect you to have a good outreach. We will expect you to be talking uh, to our neighbors, uh, neighborhoods where we are being uh, doing our initial construction construction. Uh, so that then follows, uh, uh, once we've completed with, uh, we've completed the uh, uh, nod rods, we'll be moving toward construction. Our intent is that upon completion of this seminar, with uh, your input, uh, we will putting, uh, be putting out RFQs, uh, and Ted will uh, uh, talk to you a lot more about that in the future uh, in this presentation, uh, and then uh, eventually coming up with, uh, uh, with RFPs sometime in the 2012, once we're in the post-nod uh, rod uh, scenario. So that's what we uh, have to do. Uh, we are gearing up for that construction as we speak. The, uh, the staff is building up our capability in terms of construction management, and we're building up our project control staff, and we're also building up our, uh, our procurement sections. And so then we'll be, prepared to, we'll be prepared to follow that process and get our contracts out to you. Uh, obviously, funding is a big question, and we've already had uh, Roloff talk to you a little bit about our funding already. And I think the first, uh, the first piece that I'd like to discuss is California uh, and that nine plus billion that California has, has dedicated to our project. That's extremely important for a number of reasons. Obviously, the funding to get us started, but I think more importantly, it signifies to, uh, to, to the state, it signifies to, to the nation, really, how serious we are about this. I'm not familiar with any other state that's put up this sum of money that has dedicated themselves to a project of this nature uh, this early. And as you think about some of the other states, then I think that symbol that uh, we have given, we, the state of California, have given to the federal government and others, how serious we are about this project, uh, is very, very, very important. I don't think we can minimize that. Let me also say that it's been a, an assistance to us and the staff as we put our proposals together and having a dedicated source of state money, as you know, typically the federal gov government requires us to match uh, any particular uh, uh, grant request we have. Having that state money available to us has been a huge, huge asset to us. So I think for those of us uh, that are working on the authority and the staff, a great thank you to the state of California for, for providing, that, uh, providing that funding to us. Uh, Roloff mentioned to you that that the federal government uh, has, has already uh, uh, dedicated quite a bit to their era of funding. Uh, and we do have secure funding from the federal government at this point. Uh, we do expect more money from the federal government than the not too distant future. And then the sort of the third component, uh, well actually that is a backbone then. Let me state that our plan really is to have a backbone of state and federal funding. 
Uh, and once we've uh, gone through some initial construction and getting a system up and running or have, have those plans then, at that point we expect to bring, federal, uh, bring private partners on uh, to assist us in building this system. So that really is how the funding scenario lays out. Uh, California providing a dedicated source of funding. The federal government uh, is stepping up to the plate. And uh, with that governmental money then we can bring on both private and, and, uh, uh, and uh, capital uh, to assist us in, in building out this system. Is that really how the funding scenario would look like? Uh, Roloff mentioned that there's going to be a lot of twists and turns in this process already. Uh, we know that uh, we watch in our federal uh, government work and we're very pleased that they're, we're going to continue on operation. Uh, that, that seems to be evolving on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, we'll see where that goes, but, but again, uh, we know that we have administrative support, we have a lot of support from our political leaders, and we're very positive and very uh, hopeful that that support continues, uh, and, and I think that's going to be the case uh, as we continue to build this, this uh, system in California. So that's really the status of funding. These are some more details now uh, of the funding that we have, and as Roloff mentioned, those funds are now secured. Uh, if you think a little bit about it, uh, that's pretty astounding. Uh, think back to a year ago, it was before my time in the project, but uh, essentially a very, very limited uh, source of funding that we had. So think a little bit about that. You know, we, we sometimes worry a little bit about where's the money coming from and if we got, if we got sufficient resources and are we really going to build this. But, but what a huge, huge uh, change in, in scenarios that we have from a year ago when we very, had very, very little to the point today where we're looking at a sufficient money to get this project up and running and get it started. Uh, fortunately, uh, we've had uh, two different distributions of ERA money. And you see the figures there. Uh, we had a state match. Uh, for, for actually for all the systems, that our first era money was matched uh, was matched at a at a uh, at a 50-50 basis with our state partners, uh, and then we also went in for some uh, FY10 money from uh, from the federal government and and received that all allocation, and that was matched at a lower level by the state. So bottom line of this is as we're speaking today, we have about 5.5 billion dollars for the construction phase. Again, think about that where we were a year ago when none of that funding had been secured. So again, that's the enthusiasm that I feel and that I think we all see now in terms of what it is uh, we're going to do. Uh, so $5.5 billion is in our, in our coffers uh, and then the chance, chance of some more. Uh, as you know, the, uh, uh, the citizens of Florida decided, uh, well I should say the elected leaders of the citizens of Florida decided that uh, perhaps that this wasn't the right time for them to construct a high-speed rail system. So they've offered up that funding. Uh, uh, to all of us, uh, and not too long ago, in fact a couple weeks ago, we participated in, in putting together a grant uh, with the authority and shipped that out. Uh, and we, we're very hopeful that we'll receive a, an additional uh, sum of money. Now we've asked for the whole amount, uh, the amount of money that was available was $2.4 billion. Uh, our initial, and we went to, to our board uh, and recommended an initial uh, piece uh, that would extend the system essentially from uh, Merced uh, to Bakersfield, but we also put in an option uh, to receive all of the rest of the money. Now we don't expect to receive that, uh, but, but on the other hand, uh, we've been fortunate in the past by having a grant sitting in front of our federal uh, partners, uh, the FRA, that by having a grant sitting on the shelf then when money did become available, uh, that that was then given to us. So that's a great benefit to us. So again, think about it, uh, $5.5 billion with the potential of up to three, uh, that's a lot, of, uh, a lot of resources at our disposal. And, and so I think our task really is going to be, let's put those resources to work here in a very, very short order, and that's our plan. Point in the right direction. We've already mentioned quite a bit about uh, about the initial construction. I'll go into a little bit more detail at this point. Um, <clears throat> as you know, with, with I've explained the seven sections that we have. At that point, uh, about a year ago, the FRA asked us to submit four era sections, uh, and those were the uh, uh, the peninsula two of the Central Valley sections and then the uh, uh, LA Anaheim. And so those were proposed as era funding. 
Um, in, our, in our studies of those potential uh, starts for the system then, uh, we received some additional guidance uh, from the FRA and stated that we really want you to start in the Central Valley. Um, there are some, some very, very great uh, benefits from starting and I think you all know, those of you involved in projects, you have to start somewhere. Uh, and so by s selecting the Central Valley, I think we have an ideal place to start this, start this process. I've already mentioned that the construction is relatively at grade in those areas and so we think we can build uh, some very, very long sections of, of track. Uh, in fact, our initial uh, plan was about 120 miles uh, of track that we're going to build. Uh, that has the advantage of, of getting us started. It also puts us in the, in the Central Valley so we can head north or south depending upon decisions that are made. Uh, it also will serve for us as a test track. Um, although uh, we know there are experience, and many of you are operating experience, uh, high-speed rail systems throughout the world, we know that, we know that we're going to have to side adapt and modify um, our system uh, to local conditions. And so that gives us a nice long stretch, 120 miles, where we can, uh, we can get up to speed, uh, get our train, our initial train uh, tested, get it commissioned, uh, get it in operation, and then make sure that we have an efficient uh, modern system when we, uh, when we run, the whole, uh, run the whole line. So that then is a great benefit to us to have that Central Valley with that long stretch able to achieve speeds. Uh, to allow us to test out our system. I think also a factor certainly uh, uh, that's important is that we know that the economic conditions of Central Valley uh, are, are difficult. Uh, I've spent some time up and down and uh, talked to, to leaders and people in that area and, and from an economic situation that area has suffered and so I think an added benefit for us is that we'll be able to start in that region and provide the economic benefit. Uh, the jobs and, the, and the, the economic activity that will create I think will be very important to that region. Uh, and so again my advice to you uh, uh, as your best friend at this point is that, that we are looking for you to, to go in and you hire a lot of local labor, use local resources, uh, and assist us in bringing the economic climate in that area uh, at a much, much higher level. Now, again, you don't start uh, you don't start building right away. There's a lot of preparatory work that has to occur and, and as I look around the room I know there's a lot of capability and so this is important that you realize that in addition to the construction there be other areas that we need your assistance on and I've given you just some examples here of the types of uh, capability, the types of contractors we'll be looking for. Uh, certainly early on we, we understand that acquiring right away, uh, doing our appraisals, uh, that engineering aspect will be very important and for those of you with that capability we will be looking to you to assist us. Uh, the initial section, um, the 120 miles that we're going to build, there are about a hundred and, uh, excuse me, a little over a thousand properties where we will impact. And so those real estate activities will be very important. Uh, of those 1,000 uh, parcels that we'll be uh, impacting, we know about 80% uh, of those will, uh, we will have a significant impact in that we will, uh, we will basically cut through existing farmland, we'll cut through uh, urban areas, we'll cut through businesses. Um, and so that, that, that level of detail and the amount of work that we have to do is going to be very, very significant as we deal with our real estate uh, issues. Uh, and for, again, for those of you familiar with the construction process, uh, you Utility ro uh, relocations will be important. Our intent is to, uh, is to have a separate contract for the major utility uh, relocations. But again, we'll call on our, on our partners, our, our construction uh, teams, to do a lot of the individual uh, relocations as we deal with each and every parcel uh, in our process. Uh, hazmat removal, uh, we are in industrial sectors. We are uh, operating under existing rights of way in some cases with our rail partners. And so there will be some hazmat uh, activities that uh, we will need to accomplish. So there's an opportunity and again the, the initial site uh, clearance, the clearing and grubbing and so forth will have some opportunities and we do plan to come out with separate contracts. Those may well be some very, very great opportunities for small businesses to do that. So again an opportunity for those of you out there that have that, that capability. Uh, start planning, start looking, uh, start thinking a little bit about how you can, can support us. A uh, lot of more engineering to go. Right now we're finishing up 15 percent. When we go out to bids uh, uh, we will expect about a 30 percent level. Our, our intent is to have a uh, 
design build concept in our progress in our process and so uh, so about 30 percent design is what you'll see when you give us your uh, your proposals so uh, expect that so there's additional uh, design and engineering that'll be required by each one of our prime contractors uh, a lot of surveying obviously and then we'll also need help as the PMT uh, we're going to be having a significant construction throughout the valley and so our expectation is that we will need your help in construction management construction inspections so the those of you who have that capability and wish to do that, uh, again, some more opportunities. Again, another area where we think small business can help us uh, quite a bit. So our intent is to come out with separate contracts and, and allow you to assist us doing construction management.